Boo. <laughs> so there's a whole category of games like chess, checkers, Othello, Go, tic-tac-toe, connect four, that computers are way better at playing than any human. So a computer can beat or draw a human basically any time. The question is, what do all these games have in common and how do the computers do it? Spoilers, they use math. A combinatorial game is a game where there's two players taking turns. There's no luck, so there's no dice, no cards, no spinners, nothing like that. There's no secret information, so no one knows something that someone else doesn't know. And there's no sort of infinite looping position. There's no way for the game to repeat over and over again. And the way that a computer plays a combinatorial game, it's actually pretty straightforward. Remember, computers are not actually that smart, they're just really fast. So what the computer does is it builds a game tree of every possible way the game can go, and it searches through the game tree to sort of find the best possible route for it to take. I'll give you an example using tic-tac-toe, which is a pretty simple game that I think most humans already know how to play really well. Let's say we're playing tic-tac-toe and you're in this position, you're trying to figure out what to do next. Now, if you're a human, you probably have good intuition about what to do next, but a robot wouldn't know what to do, so instead what they do is they just think about every possible way the game could go. So it's X's turn, there are three possible moves for X. X can go here, here, or here. And then what the computer does is it keeps building this tree out. So now it'll be O's turn and O has two possible moves here and two possible moves here and two possible moves here. Let's just write them all out. And you even include like the stupid moves, the moves that you know no human would ever actually make because the computer can't really tell right away. Oops. In some of these positions, you'll see the game is already over. So if the game is over and O has won, I'm going to color that orange. Orange means O won the game. So this is already a win for O. This is already a win for O. The rest of the games, there's still more playing to do. It's X's turn, and there's one move that X can make in each scenario. Okay, so how did all of these games go? In this game, X1, I'm going to color that green for X winning. Here, it was a tie, so I'm going to make it yellow if the game ended in a draw. Here, another draw. And here, X1 again, so that's going to be green for X winning. So this is the full game tree from this starting position. Now, what does a computer do? How does it figure out what to do next as X? Well, it just goes up through the tree and tries to color in every position to decide whether it's a win for X, a win for O, or a forced draw with best play. So let's see what that looks like. Here, well obviously X only has one move and it's a win for X, so this position here is certainly a win for X. Now if you work your way back up this way, O has two options. One is a win for O, and the other is a win for X. O is definitely going to choose the option that's a win for O. So this, with best play, is a win for O. Similarly here, X has one option, it's to force a draw. That means this position here is also a draw. If O can choose between a draw and a win for O, O is going to pick the win for O. So this position also, a win for O. Here, X has to play a draw, that makes this a draw position. Here, X can play a win, that makes this a win position for X. Now if O is choosing between a draw and a win for X, O is going to pick the draw. And so finally, we work our way up to the top of this tree, and X has three options, a win for O, a win for O, or a draw. X is going to, between those three options, pick the draw. So this position is a draw with best play. Now, of course, this is just one branch of the full game tree for tic-tac-toe. Really, this is part of like a much larger game. And that's really all a computer does when it's playing Othello or Connect Four or something like this, is it builds out a whole game tree, and for the most part, it just brute forces its way, starting from the end positions and working its way up. Tic-Tac-Toe is an example of something that's called a solved game, where a computer or a set of supercomputers has gone through and figured out every possible way the game can go. They know who wins and what the perfect strategy is. Another solved game is Connect Four. Connect Four, it turns out, is a win for the first player if they play really well. And Checkers is also a solved game. 
game. Checkers is a forced draw if both players play perfectly. Chess and Go are two examples of games that are not fully solved just because the game tree is too complicated. There's too many options for each move, but some top chess players think that chess is a forced draw with best play. If you're into games like Connect 4 and Checkers, you don't have to worry about the fact that they're solved. The solutions are too complicated for any human to figure out, so they're still pretty fun to play in practice. If you're interested in this kind of math where you talk about combinatorial games, there's a little bit about that in the book. And also there are like, you can buy an entire book on this. I read this book on combinatorial game theory. They go over like hundreds of different games you can play and ways that you can do math with it. It's really cool. Any topic in math, there are like entire textbooks where people went really, really, really deep into that kind of math, solving it, proving theorems about it, everything you could possibly think of. Math missions are really intense in that way. When we find something we like, we really go hard with it. Remember, for more Math Without Numbers, be sure to subscribe, hit the post notifications bell, give it a like, pre-order the book, and I'll be back with new videos every Tuesday. Happy Halloween.